Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Churn Farms. We are in day five of early autumn still. Um, we have uh, finished up our barley field, and uh, you may notice that our dollar amounts are increased a little bit. That is basically because we have uh, collected enough straw over at the pig farm that we have more than enough straw that we need. So we had, I don't know, maybe uh, 30, 35... 40 bales of straw left um, we went ahead and decided to um, sell that straw it wasn't necessarily the best price uh, we got uh, 400 and about 450 dollars per bale uh, for the straw but uh, we did net ourselves about thirty thousand dollars I think uh, in extra I guess that would be more than uh, 30 some bales now what not really sure what we brought in. I kind of forget at this point. But at any rate, uh, we brought in a fair amount of uh, uh, extra money in selling the excess straw. And given that our forecast, we have rain for tomorrow. Not really sure when the rain's going to come. I uh, decided we'd go ahead and get started on our canola harvest. So we've got our combine here. Uh, got our hired helper working on the combine. And uh, we're just going to be carting grain all day. So. So we're just going to cart grain all day. And uh, see how much of this field we can get done. Uh, before it gets too terrible dark. And then pick up tomorrow. Depending on uh, when it's going to rain. And see if we can't uh, hammer this field out tomorrow. And uh, then we've got, uh, you know, day seven on Saturday, we got sunshine. I'm hoping that we can uh, head into one of the grass fields and uh, bale up some hay on day seven. And we'll have to see where we are uh, with respect to that rain. Um, ultimately, the rain for tomorrow and the rain for uh, Sunday uh, with respect to getting the rest of our, of our hay done. We're here waiting for our uh, harvester to fill up a little bit. Then we're going to uh, to empty. Not really sure how long this is going to going to take. Got uh, an opportunity. We might as well unload a little bit here. Oh, well, we've got a little bit of a clearing. This field has very steep inclines. See our harvester, it looks like he's actually uh, sliding back a little bit. Hoping our harvester has enough power to, uh, to deal with these inclines. One of the reasons why we're using our big Massey Ferguson here uh, to drive this little tipper is the uh, the hills that we've got to deal with here on this particular field. And we're going to be taking this grain directly over to the pig farm uh, because of the fact that we're going to use the canola as part of our pig feed.
see if we can't, uh, I don't think we're going to get a full load before we get uh, over here where we're going to have to uh, worry about trees again. So I was talking with the map author and uh, he was mentioning the, the lookout tower that's up here. About how on uh, the previous farm sim game, uh, the lookout tower had uh, cameras, I guess custom cameras installed, and uh, had some binoculars that you could look through and uh, I guess get different views of the area or of the map. And um, sadly, we couldn't, or he couldn't, uh, couldn't get that reproduced in uh, the FS17 version. That did sound awful cool, and it uh, would be neat if we could basically get up there and overlook the whole area. I mean, look, right there we're overlooking the pig and the sheep area, uh, right there. It's going to uh, hold up here, because... Uh, worried about that hoping he would close his pipe up. If we look up here, it's a great view. Got way up. Imagine if we were able to get even higher up and look at that uh, lookout tower. What kind of a view we would have. So it looks like we're going to be able to get um, pretty much a full round of the field where we need to uh, empty is pretty good because we're going to need some time to, uh, to go over to the uh, big area and back. Got our chop straw uh, working here so that we can, uh, when we cultivate this in, we'll get a fertilized level out of it. Go ahead and uh, just fill up our trailer. cover on let's go out here they're convenient I need our forecast up anymore let's head on over here to uh, let's head to the pig farm it's really handy that there's a silo over here uh, because we're going to need the various we're going to use separate uh, separate crops to feed our pigs we're not going to uh, to mix it into a pig food mix but it's handy that we've got the silo so that we don't have to uh, cart over the uh, cereal the protein and the um, root crop and uh, corn. Uh, that would be like four separate trips. Then we can just bring it on over here and fill up out of here. See our tip 
tipping in the back mirror. Now we're going to, uh, at some point we're going to need to cart over either our barley or our wheat over to here. We've got 145,000 liters of barley or wheat. We've got 184,000 liters of barley. Depending on which one of these is going to bring us the best price, it really looks like barley is going to bring us the best price at this point. Uh, we will have one of these crops for um, sale, and we'll use the other crop for our pig food. And to that degree, we're only going to need a certain uh, small amount of what we've got uh, for our pigs. So... Let's go ahead and uh, and talk a little bit about that. In that, uh, how much we're going to need for our pigs. So the plan is to have about a hundred pigs uh, to start with. So if we have a hundred pigs, we're going to need um, the entire year. We're going to need about a hundred and eight thousand liters of corn. We're going to need 54,000 liters of either wheat or barley. Now, remember, pigs are going to reproduce. So, if we say, we're, if let's say we have, um, let's say 150 pigs would probably be a good, a good figure, um, knowing that we'll have uh, 100 pigs to start out with. But over um, autumn, we're going to buy their pigs in autumn. And our pigs are going to start reproducing right away. So during autumn, uh, we will get more pigs through reproduction. Not really sure where we will end up as far as our, our ending number. Uh, but they'll be less than 150. And then come springtime, our pigs will start reproducing again. Um, so we're going to use 150 pigs as our, as our amount. And we're just going to... Uh, to use that as a way to budget how much pig food we're going to need um, out of its various components. So 150 pigs, uh, if we if we ignore about reproduction, okay, so 150 pigs are going to need 162,000 liters of corn, 81,000 liters of wheat or barley, 64,000 800 or so liters of a protein, which would be either soybeans, canola, or sunflowers, and we're going to use canola for this, and 16,200 liters of root crop. Uh, we've got plenty of potatoes still in our silo. We only really need to keep about 16,000 liters of potatoes around, uh, and we need um, 72,000 liters of straw, which really is about 18 bales. We've got more than enough bales of straw to uh, to satisfy our needs. Our harvester up here. So we have uh, a fair amount of wheat and barley that we can sell and still maintain 81,000 or so liters of that for our pig food needs. So ultimately we're going to probably over winter is cart um, what we need for our pigs over to the pig farm and just uh, keep everything else over at the arable farm in the silos and then we'll know um, we'll have reserved what we need as far as a crop goes to uh, you know the pig farm will have everything that we need to keep and then anything in the other farm silos will be able to uh, to sell. Now that way we won't have to worry about accidentally overselling crops. We're probably going to uh, cart another load other than this one. So we'll probably do this cart and one more cart today. Then we'll probably call it an evening and uh, pick back up here tomorrow uh, with the rest of our harvest. Let's just 
pause here. Harvester. Let's turn. Major decline. Spin around the cameras. Get a better perspective on what's going on here. Really working the brakes on the uh, harvester, that's for sure. To help the harvester out, we're going to try to keep it um, as light as possible by pulling the, as much grain out as we can. Gonna make one more round where he starts his uh, up and down runs. We are gonna go up and down this field as opposed to across. It's just too steep uh, to be going horizontally across the uh, incline. Some of you might be wondering, how do we know? Um, how are we estimating how much food we're going to need uh, for, for our pigs? Or how do we know we have enough straw for our, uh, for our cows, for our pigs? You know, how do we, how we know we're only going to need about 18 bales? And that is, uh, I put together a really cool spreadsheet that uses the data out of the Seasons mod to basically calculate up um, for you how much of a given um, animal type will need to eat over each specific season as well as over um, the entire year as a whole uh, because it's it's my belief that to play seasons properly you really need to uh, fully plan out your year plan out your harvest and everything And the only way to uh, to plan those things out is to uh, is to know uh, basically what you're going to need at the end of a year. So the spreadsheets available over at PCSG. Uh, it's fairly simple to use. You plug in the number of animals that you wish to keep as your kind of goal. You plug in the um, season length. Uh, as a as what I call a day factor so for example 24 day seasons as a day factor of eight that basically tells me that um, what that means is that there are eight sets of three day feedings in a given season at, on uh, 24 day play spin around here so if you play three day seasons your day factor would be one six day seasons your day factor would be a two and so forth and the reason that's important is that uh, with seasons you feed your animals a fixed amount every uh, season regardless of season length so in order to calculate out how much you're going to need to feed a particular animal or a particular amount of animals over three days, you would need to know um, how many three-day seasons or three-day feedings are in a given season. Since the amount, let's say, pigs eat over autumn is fixed. Um, so the longer the season length, less you have to feed them every three days and uh, it can make it can make animals fairly easy to keep as opposed to a shorter season length where you have to feed them 
either all of a, all of the season amount um, at once, or like for example, six day seasons. Uh, you have to feed them an amount that's basically split in two um, for every season. So that's uh, that's basically what we've got going on here. So and unload. So we get one more cart today. 822. I think that load took us about an hour um, to get loaded up. So see how long uh, get this done. I see the harvesters there at 32%. Uh, wait for him at the bottom of the hill here. He's going to be no need to unload him that quick. I think I passed the Past the it's our cornfield. All right, let's spin around here. There is it. down the hill. Yes, so let's just uh, get out and wait on him. Things go. See, we are going to want to uh, going to want to unload him before he turns around. So we want to get him before he uh, turns around, given on where his pipe is. Let's see if we can't quickly get lined up here. Kind of positioned our tractor right in front of his header to uh, kind of block him, because we don't want to uh, we don't want to have to drive through the crop. So we're going to um, basically call it, I guess, here. We're not going to uh, fill up anymore. Go ahead and let him go home. And we're going to go ahead and fold up the harvester. In the event that it does rain, lower our head, turn that off. Go ahead and take this um, over to the pig farm. And that's where we'll leave you guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, this has been another uh, episode here at Churn Farm, so on 24 Day Seasons Play. I encourage you to uh, like the video if you obviously like the video. Uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber so you can get updated information on content that we post. And also, go check out PCSG and the Three Dudes Gaming Network. Uh, they are both really great web communities, uh, adult-oriented. Um, not from the standpoint that uh, there's bad language or anything like that, but quite the opposite. 
adult-oriented in the way that uh, we behave like um, proper proper adults. And uh, we don't resource to uh, call people names. We don't resource to uh, resort to telling people to go figure out their answers to their own problems. There to help. And uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to go over there and ask them. The only dumb question is the question that's not been asked. And uh, the only bad answer is the uh, is to the question that's not been asked. So, lots of people have uh, praised PCSG and Three Dudes, uh, basically like, uh, you know, why didn't I find you guys sooner? Uh, it's always a great comment to hear. So until next time, guys. Happy farming.